Hi, students. Um, this video is um, about the very first step you're probably going to take as you, or maybe the second step, the first step you're going to take in uh, starting to work on essay three is to read the assignment and watch the video introduction to it. The second step is to think about a couple topics, one topic, or it could be two or three, um, that you think might interest you and start exploring that topic on a database. As I said in, um, in the video introduction to essay three, a database is a collection of articles that have been written on a topic, um, uh, or a database is basically just a huge collection of articles that have been published. And the reason why it's better to do a search for information inside a database rather than a Google search outside a database is because the sources inside a database have been through some kind of editorial process. So what I mean by editorial process is they've been fact-checked. If, if something's gonna be published in uh, the Atlantic Monthly Magazine, that article, all the facts and information in that article have been checked by editors. They're actually people called fact checkers. That's their job. And all they do all day is check the facts that are gonna be published in a particular um, article and stop the articles from being published if, if the information isn't inside them isn't good enough. Um, publications make mistakes. They sometimes publish stuff and they have to later correct it. Um, but generally speaking, the articles in a database are going to have uh, information that is more likely to be accurate than um, doing a Google search or looking for information outside a database. Um, so I am now going to show you, um, I know a lot of you learned this from the library workshops, but I'm going to just review again, how to use a database and give you some example searches um, with some of the SA3 topics. Um, so I'm just going to start here at the library website. We'll talk about one search a little bit, but I'm going to just show you how to go into the regular databases. So right here where it says databases A to Z, and that's, and then I, you know, there are many good databases. I really like ProQuest. Um, so I'm going to P for ProQuest and I'm clicking on um, ProQuest, which is right here. And now I'm into the database. I have to sign in. If you have any trouble signing in, you can always call the library, but I think there are instructions that pop up that show you how to sign in. Um, now I'm basically in. So that was like three or four steps. I'm into the database. Um, and now I'm doing something pretty similar to what I'm doing when I do a Google search. Um, I just have a few more options, which makes it even better. So uh, let's say one of the topics for essay three was African-American hair. And I was talking about how there was a lot written about Michelle Obama's choices and decisions about how to style her hair at different points when she was first lady. So I'm just going to see what I find for that. So I'm going to put, whoops, I'm going to put my cursor in here and see. Yeah, I'm going to just put it Michelle Obama. <clears throat> and then because I want articles that are actually about Michelle Obama, not articles that just mention her, it's really important that I go over to here and instead of anywhere, I put, uh, I click on um, all subjects and in indexing. That increases the chances that I'm gonna find articles that are actually about her. And then I don't want just any article. I've got and over there. I want articles in which her hair is discussed. So I've got Michelle Obama and hair and I picked it. So, this step of um, choosing all subjects and in indexing on the right is a really important step for kind of narrowing down um, the articles you find. And then I'm just going to do search and see what we find. <clears throat> okay, 171 results. That's um, uh, 
pretty good. That's it's a lot, but um, but it gives us something to work with. And we can see uh, right away we have an article that says I guess it's I can't tell what it, it's insider. I don't know um, if that's what kind of if that's a publication. Um, but already we have uh, an article basically about Michelle Obama's hair and people's reactions to the way uh, she um, she uh, styled her hair for the inauguration. So that could be useful. Um, and then one thing that's nice when you go into these articles, um, there are related articles over here on the right. So. Um, there's stuff about black owned makeup brands and stuff, maybe nothing that we could use for an article, for an essay about African-American hair, but you never know. Um, let's say I'm browsing and I think, oh, this looks good. Uh, maybe I would use this. Um, notice over here on the right, you can save it as a PDF. You can email it to yourself. You can print it. What are the other options? Um, save to your research. Um, so uh, you can save it to Google Drive. Lots of options here. Um, if you want to collect um, uh, articles that might be interesting to you. And then of course, right here where it says site, um, you can click there and we are going to be using MLA 8th edition you get an example of how you uh, might uh, cite this um, article on a works cited page. So when you give me your uh, six possible sources this Sunday, um, you need to give them to me in the form of a works cited page. And I'll have a video up about how to do a works cited page. But a big part of your work can be done if you use the cite button. You can just copy and paste this citation um, into a Microsoft Word or a Google Doc. Um, and you also will want, I will tell you in the work cited video, you do want to check it against um, your other instructions for doing a work cited page. But usually these are pretty good. Occasionally there are little mistakes in them so you uh, just need to check them but that's where this is what's called a citation generator they didn't have them when i was writing research papers so i'm very jealous um, you can just copy and paste those into your work cited page um, and then double space and and double check them to make sure um, they're in the correct format um, so each of these uh, things that comes up is a different article in a different publication. They look like they're all coming from the same, same place, but they're really not. This is coming from Times Higher Education, as I can see here. This is coming from the New York Daily News. What else? Uh, let's see. Some things from Vogue magazine. These are all articles from different sources. And when you click on them, um, you get the text of the article. You also, up here at the top, get all the information about the article, the author, the publication, um, the date it was published. And then this right here at the end, this little 13, is the page number. So that's all really important information to have. OK. so. Um, there are three super important things I want to make sure you know about um, if you're doing a database search. The first one was the thing about choosing SU for subjects and headings on the initial subject page, search page. Um, the second thing is I want to remind you, if you need to, you can narrow down your search by um, narrowing the search for source types. For example, I often, um, for some of your classes, like for your social sciences classes, your teachers are gonna want you to pick peer reviewed sources from academic journals. Um, in our class, because we're doing this research essay so quickly, I would encourage you 
to just include for source types, newspapers and magazines. And the reason for that is because a lot of what um, we're learning about, um, academic journals have really good accurate information and data. Um, but often academic journal articles are very long and they use a lot of jargon. But what they publish and the information they share is often picked up by the newspapers and magazines who write about them in, um, with less jargon and in more concise articles. And so I often encourage students to just, especially if you get like 5,000 articles when you do a search, see what happens if you limit your search type to newspapers and magazines and see how much that narrows it down. I don't think it's gonna narrow it down a lot here because it looks like a lot of these sources are already um, newspapers and magazines, but that can be a really helpful way to narrow down a search. Um, so it narrowed it down by about 70. The other thing is if I were maybe writing an essay about Michelle Obama's hair and why it was such a big deal when she was first um, lady, I might also limit my search to things that were written um, about her when she was first lady. So I might limit my search to 2007 to 2016, um, just to read the kind of stuff that was written about her when she was first lady. Let's see what that does. So now I'm down to 30 results and that might make my job a little easier. So those are both really good things to keep in mind or there's three things. Make sure you click on SU on the right in your initial search. So you get articles that are actually about the subject you're trying to learn more about. Um, consider limiting um, the source type over here um, to uh, just, uh, you know, selecting just newspapers and magazines so that you're not dealing with scholarly journals or other types of sources that might be less helpful. Um, you might also consider limiting the publication date. Um, you can also uh, use OneSearch, which I, um, I haven't used as much. Um, the thing about OneSearch is it is doing, um, it searches books and articles, all sorts of sources. And so um, you might have more than you need, like we got 8,000 results. That's kind of why, um, I prefer to start with a database. Um, but again, I can limit um, my sources. I can limit my dates. Um, I can limit it to stuff that's just available online. Um, uh, so one search might be another way to go. And I hope if you took the library workshops, um, you know uh, what you need to do to narrow things down in one search. The one other thing about the databases I wanna tell you about is if you're doing a topic that's really controversial, um, for example, if you were doing, I don't know, rules about, let's see, I'm trying to think of which of our topics, I don't know, maybe Trayvon Martin, it's hard to believe it, you know, a kid getting shot or killed is, controversial, but it might be about stand your ground laws, which were, um, which are pretty controversial, which say that if somebody is firing at somebody because they feel threatened, um, that they can be acquitted, um, which many people say is, um, hurts black men the most because, because of racial stereotypes, people are more likely to be um, to feel threatened by black men for good reasons or bad. Um, so if we wanted to write about stand your ground laws, we might go over to this database opposing viewpoints. And in this database, you can find articles sort of pro and con different issues. Um, let's see what happens when we put in stand your ground laws. Um, 
um, there's some academic journals, there are some viewpoints, um, and you can read a bunch of articles about them. Um, so uh, that's another really good database to know about. So that's your basic introduction to the databases. Um, please let me know if you need any help. Again, as I said in the earlier video about the video introduction to essay three, um, I really encourage you to hold your topic loosely um, while you look through the database and be willing to shape your topic according to what you're finding and according to what's interesting to you. Uh, let me know if you have any questions. Thank <laughs> you.